actually quite precedent at times, that experts have been attempting to warn us were imminent for years. There can still be moments of relaxation and peace. This is Lockdown Bard. This week's poem is entitled Great Expectations. I would interpret it as a praise poem. In this instance, one commissioned probably not by the subject, or in this case, subjects of the poem, but probably by an older relative. Probably their father. Dear are the three who have come to visit me, who have played upon me in sport. Three of the seed of blood's lasting stock, the full of a smooth bed, are the three who have come. To bind a covenant with me, they sit in turn around me. Three blue-eyed ones with gentle voice, fresh young seedlings noble in act. I have got a pledge for each of them to praise the lads from the high-born company. Graceful, modest, and gentle. It will be to them an ode in good verse. The head of the clan to the land of Tal's descendants will be Tig, the eldest of the nobles, heir of Donal, the descendant of Good Brian, and learning honour in his footsteps. The hosts of the descendants of Cas around Crahor shall be leaders of Munster's land. I promise it from God, no outland stock shall be in repute. The third hazelnut from the pure cluster is another tide. Morka's heir maintaining the poets of ancient lore. This O'Brien shall be in all men's mouths. About the children of Cass, the three branches from the native soil shall be a wood of shelter. None but a poet can despoil them, the three stately trees ever fruitful. Three hawks, fortunate in the chase against marauders, loving their race, equal in age, swift birds of combat from one forest. Three bears, victorious in flight, by their defence of MacNea's mansion, the three comrades shall be three redoubtable champions. Three devourers of the salmon of knowledge, three pips of a gold-skinned apple, three blossoms that make our verse, mirrors that beguile women folk. Three fesh hazelnuts from the finest cluster. Three streams from the rock of a clear spring. Seedlings of a kingly branch with noble mind. Juice of the vines of princely sway. Soon shall their javelins be fighting in Con's hall. As bright and blood-red spears of valour for the warlike, brave and active band. Three hurly sticks that win the goal against the warriors of the land of the fair Meg shall they exchange for ivory-hilted swords. It will be a defence to the race of Kovtach. These youths who meet beside me, the lads shall be a flock of champions, a riding horse controlled by each O'Brien, like steeds harnessed with golden bridles. Like fires from which sparks are cast, which blaze from a single flash, shall be the three throughout fair, soft balnva, motives of battle and contest. It is no blemish in pure and precious gold, such is ever its wont, to be at first an honoured glowing mass of soft metal. This I mark as an example to the race of Brian. Six white sides, fair as foam, six calves of notable steps, six feet that will be a prop in battle, six hands that kindle honour, six cheeks that need never blush, six modest but far-seeing eyes, no request finds them unwilling, 
Three fine mouths with gentle words. Krahor of the white skin. Two tigs rewarding schools, supporting chief bards. These are the three that I have chosen. I doubt not that I shall be made content. May the Trinity bestow upon the three life long upon the soil of the holy clerics, flower of the fair hosts that never hoarded their wealth to be telling of them is dear. Now obviously this poem is written from the perspective of someone who is negotiating some kind of arrangement with these three brothers, perhaps. But it is unlikely that the individual whose perspective this was written from was also the author. They most likely commissioned their own bard, or a freelance bard, for want of a better word, to write this poem for them, so that they could recite it as part of the, the niceties of beginning negotiations. I hope you've enjoyed this poem, and thank you for watching. <laughs>